Hello everybody, I'm Julien Noël. I'm the chair of the Energy Engineering and Mechanical Engineering program at UTech. Today we're going to talk to with Wang Do Kim. Wang Do Kim is, uh, is from Korea. He's a new professor from the Mechanical Engineering department. Today we're going to talk about his background, his R&D expertise, and also the courses that he's teaching at UTech. Wang Do, nice mm -hmm. to meet you and welcome at UTech. Mm -hmm. Very nice to, to be with you and I would like to know about you, what is your trajectory? You're coming from uh, South Korea mm -hmm. and now you're in Peru, so can you tell me what ha happened? My journey. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have uh, traveled uh, many different uh, places in Bundo, in the world, you know, starting from Korea. But I uh, moved to uh, Unidos America in Pennsylvania. I studied in Lehigh University, a major mechanical engineering and specialized in uh, biomechanics, locomotion, you know, sports and clinical uh, relevance. And I, after getting a PhD degree, mechanical engineering. I repatriated to South Korea and I got a job as a CAD CAM manager in Samsung. Samsung. And, uh, and actually Samsung, uh, I mean, it was a good experience, industrial experience, manufacturing, design, how to work together, you know, collaborating. And taking this opportunity, I moved to uh, Singapore, Nanyang Technological University. And uh, I begin to uh, start my academic career as a uh, teaching in biomechanics, as well as research on some clinical, you know, orthopedic uh, research. And uh, actually, I then moved again to Oregon in America, okay? And because I had the uh, uh, opportunity to work in some laboratory, legacy clinical laboratory, in the biomechanics, so I had a kind of a tremendous opportunity to uh, encountering many different orthopedic surgeons and designing some, you know, uh, medical device. And I again moved to Lisbon, Portugal, you know, as an uh, associate to research in uh, Technical University of Lisbon. And this is called Facultade uh, Motorside Humana. It's basically a sports science school. And I had a great experience encountering with uh, especially interdisciplinary research with uh, many different uh, uh, kind of a background of a professor, including psychology, human movement analysis. So I had a great experience about how I can expand my research on different area and also observe, digest different realm of research rather than just uh, stay on this time what mechanical engineering uh, uh, domain. And now I uh, eventually back to Korea uh, and I did uh, uh, a lecture on uh, biomechanics in Seoul National University. And then again, I actually got an offer from this UTE, Prestige University in Peru. And I took advantage to expose my area and contribute to my experience to a uh, student in UTEC, okay? So this is what I'm here, <laughs> okay? That's my journey, some kind of a summarization. And, uh, so yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk about basically mm -hmm. your experience because you have the industrial in, uh, uh, experience, mm -hmm. also the academic one, we're gonna talk about that in the, mm -hmm. in the next question, the next section. Well, you were saying just right now that mm. you started in Korea in Samsung. Mm. Tell me more about what about the professional experience that you did have uh, in Samsung. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, as a manager of uh, CIM, it's called uh, Computer Integrated Manufacturing. I was uh, responsible to integrate the manufacturing to design and uh, you know supply chain eventually up to uh, marketing, you know. So we need to build a kind of information superhighway to connect all the data, okay, workflow. Okay, that was a great uh, kind of experience, you know. I can really perceive the, what's the real, you know, core technology to make uh, competitive manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, How many people mm -hmm. you were leading? I was a manager of 20, uh, 20 okay, personnel, okay, yeah, mostly 
mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, computer science. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I moved to Singapore, but not manufacturing, it's biomechanics. Okay. That was, was my original expertise, you know, my PhD is in biomechanics, you know. And uh, I focused on kind of clinical research. Oh, and like when you did transition. Yeah, okay. transition, you know. So I, I tried to implement, you know, kind of a computer technology also, how we can apply this modern technology to clinical uh, kind of a world, you know, because clinic is uh, really depends on the doctor, medical doctor's experience. Right? They don't really use about computer. But nowadays it's changing, you know, they're using a lot of computerized uh, tool like MRI, CAT scan, or all the, you know, diagnosis tool is based on computer graphic, you know. So I collaborate with uh, orthopedic surgeon in Singapore University, uh, Singapore Hospital, and uh, and I moved to Oregon. Also, I add more experience on how to design the medical device and so on. Okay, so I think the basically medical research and clinical biomechanical research is different from conventional traditional manufacturing because uh, medical treatment is based on patient. It's a, we call the patient-specific treatment. It's not mass production or management. Every individual has a different, uh, you know, uh, kind of anatomy as well as uh, physiology and uh, different behavior. So all the medical treatment as Bison has to be customized. We call uh, personalized uh, kind of treatment or patient-specific treatment. Okay. So I came to here in uh, Lima. So. I think uh, we need, I'd like to continue this kind of research, how we can design and build uh, patient-specific kind of biomechanical yeah, research. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. But also you just stepped out because you were in Lisbon, mm -hmm. in Portugal, mm -hmm. and you were doing also some R&D over there. You, yeah. you have been over there six years. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that was actually the most uh, kind of uh, uh, the significant benefit I have uh, uh, acquired in this uh, uh, environment, the Lisbon environment, was I had a chance to uh, collaborate with uh, uh, kind of uh, psychology, you know. Because basically, to deal with uh, the patient-specific or player or consumer-specific uh, design, we need to understand uh, behavior, psychology kind of uh, aspect of uh, individual. So that was uh, the kind of uh, new kind of uh, paradigm I have uh, encountered you know, so far. And you're talking about behavior, but how is the behavior? Because you've been working in, in Asia, mm. in Europe, mm. and in America. So how mm. is the, beha the behavior of people? Is it the same? Is it different? Or is it interesting also with the cultural background of the people? Oh, can you tell us more about that? Okay. So, uh, okay. So basically, we cannot just design patient or personalized uh, consumer product. We need some kind of design theory, you know? Without the theory, it's kind of a very... But the theory yeah. is the same in all about the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Theory okay. is one. Actually, uh, it's called uh, Gibson's uh, affordance theory. You know? Afford Gibson's affordance theory is uh, to describe how animals perceive their environment, you know. And the concept of this affordance was uh, originally introduced in the field of uh, perceptual psychology. But in the context of engineering, you know, design, the affordance uh, is was defined defined as uh, the relationship between two uh, kind of uh, two uh, subsystem, okay? So where the potential behavior occur uh, that would not be possible with either system in isolation. So basically, designer defined the system of a structure of a system and then changing its affordance. And then, what? Well, not only how the artifact behavior, but also how user will behave with this artifact. So this is a kind of affordance-based definition of a design. So I'd like to address this as a kind of a basic foundation theory of a uh, my research as well as teaching, you know, mm -hmm. affordance-based design. Yes, yes sir. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
So wonder you were taking so many interesting interesting thing about behavior and thing like that, mm. but how are we gonna do it at U Tech? How are we gonna do it in Peru? Because for mm. me it's a great honor to have you my R and D staff. So mm. I, would, I would like to do, to know how you're gonna do it mm. and also how we're gonna transfer that all your knowledge to mm. our students into the mm. class uh, mm. class work in the schedule. Mm. Okay, so basically uh, about the teaching aspect, okay? uh, I try to educate uh, UTEC students, uh, make them think more system thinking, you know, because affordance-based design is more like uh, how we design in the aspect of uh, end user rather than just the design or manufacturing, you know, it's a system, it's, a, it's kind of ecological thinking. So I'm teaching uh, this affordance-based design for the personalized product or more human-oriented design, you know, rather than just conventional uh, mechanical kind of component uh, thinking, you know, system thinking, more kind of uh, expand the, the horizon, you know. Okay, and uh, about this research, okay, we would like to, uh, I would like to explore some kind of um, contribution for clinic. Clinical, uh, clinical community in this uh, Lima and Peru, okay? So how to contribute to the technology development for uh, clinical, you know, uh, uh, utilization of my, this, uh, uh, this affordance-based design for medical device or treatment, as well as some uh, kind of research, how to prevent some the, the disease, okay, for example. So that can be a kind of a uh, future research. Mm. And how do you, I, you would like, I, you're teaching for mechanical engineering department, but you would like to work like, what type of also, what type of other engineering field you would be interesting to work with? Because as an engineer, we need to work in a, as a multidisciplinary mm -hmm. team. So mm -hmm. who would be the best candidate for you? to come in into your R&D staff mm -hmm. so that you can keep doing the great thing that you were doing. Yeah, I think uh, it's quite open, you know, because uh, I, as far as I know, UTEC is a slogan. The agenda is uh, interdisciplinary, it's the future, right? So I completely comply with this uh, kind of uh, future, uh, what the goal of UTEC. So now, 21st century, things change, you know. So industry is rapidly changing, and academic shouldn't stay one, you know, kind of domain. We need to mingle around, open. So we uh, would like to collaborate more in this disciplinary manner. So for the bioengineering is one field I can collaborate and contribute to my expertise. Also industrial engineering, they need uh, some kind of more human-oriented design, ergonomically or occupational, you know. So there are many opportunities for me to contribute and mingle with the, you know, uh, steps already in here, in Ute. So I think uh, that's the kind of, you know, the future, my uh, aim, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to... So we have to do a call for the student to come yeah. in, to visit you yeah. in your office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, welcome uh, to... we're gonna yeah. have, yeah, the, we're gonna have the lab, so everything's yeah. gonna be ready, so yeah. that student can do great thing. Yeah. Also to, to go visit some uh, hospital and see and yeah, look for yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and to do some design prototype for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Wondo, what is your late motive? I mean, what is the late motive of the student that one student should have, and also about R and D, and also if you can tell us where did you publish most of your article, uh, scientific article? Uh, that would be interesting to know that the public know mm. about that. Yeah. Okay. So I basically. Uh, kind of uh, expose myself about uh, publication, uh, mostly uh, biomechanics, especially Journal of Biomechanics, and Journal of uh, Biomechanical Modeling and Computational, you know, kind of. Uh, so, uh, but also I uh, well, published in the clinical journal, you know, Podia, Podia American Podia, Podiatric uh, kind of journal, institution also, uh, some orthopedic journal and even physiotherapy journal, you know, general physiotherapy. I mean, pretty much interdisciplinary, you know. As an engineer, we mostly we just uh, think about, we send our manuscript to the just the journal, engineering journal, but 
I try to diversify myself to you know different area. Yeah. So that's kind of. And yeah. how you how do you expect your student to work with you to publish and mm. how you like to work that type of thing with them? Yeah. I think that recently I perceived a new trend of technologies emerging. You know, that is kind of a, a, the experiment, some human movement analysis under the virtual environment, uh, virtual reality environment. You know, immersive virtual reality environment. So they have uh, some kind of a stereoscopic uh, the displayer, and they walk and uh, behave in the kind of a virtual environment, you know. So this will kind of a new uh, technology will be soon, you know, uh, incorporated in our UTEC laboratory, right? So that's kind of be a good opportunity for students, you know, not just for entertainment, for virtual reality. They can utilize this technology to produce real productive and uh, beneficial kind of a scientific what well, the research and production so either they can use this kind of technology for their future career or uh, contribute to you know scientific journal so that might be a near term uh, kind of a goal yeah i guess Wang, thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure to, to do the interview with you. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we're going to come back here again and to talk much more about the, the great news that you're going to give us uh, give us from the lab, from the mm -hmm. paper, from everything that you, we're going to do here at UTEC. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for, for you guys listening to us at Time to Talk. And we are waiting for you for the next edition. Thank you. Thank you.